One of the ways that you can create interactivity in Storyline is by using buttons. And Storyline comes with a whole bunch of different button styles. You can find them by coming up to the Insert tab and choosing Button. And you'll see a couple different push button styles here, as well as some checkboxes and radio buttons. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to insert a button and customize the way it looks. But if you need to also understand how to make a button do something, that's where triggers come in. So you'll want to also take a look at our triggers tutorial if you need some help with you know, creating an action or a trigger for your button. What we're going to do is insert this rectangular button, this push button style. And once I select that, you'll notice that my cursor changes into this little crosshair symbol. And then I can either click or click and drag to draw a button on my slide. And once the button is there, I can resize it, I can move it around, I can do all sorts of other formatting just like I can with other objects. And another cool thing to notice is if I open up my states panel down here, is Storyline actually creates a whole bunch of states for my button automatically. And this is great because then it means that I don't have to do that. But of course, if I wanted to modify any of these states, I could choose the Edit States button and then you know select the state I want to modify and make whatever customizations I want. I could even click this button, this New State button, if I wanted to add some more custom states to my button, just like I could with any other object. Now, if you want to add a little bit of text to your button, that's another neat thing. You don't need to create a separate text box over it. You can just select the button and just start typing. And that text then becomes part of the button itself. In fact, if I come back to my states panel here, you can see how it populates through all of the states on my um, different button states on this object, which is really nice. It just means that you don't have to manage multiple objects to you know, control the text in the button. It's all just one tidy little object. Now while we're looking at text, let's also talk about the font. The font that you see on a button is going to come from the theme fonts that you use for your course. And you can switch to a different set of theme fonts by going up to the Design tab and using this font dropdown. And you can see right now I'm using this set of theme fonts called Articulate, but I could switch to a different set of theme fonts if I wanted to. I've got lots of choices here, some of which I've created um, as custom theme fonts. This one here is called Chalkboardish. I'm going to go ahead and use that one. And the font that's going to be applied to my button is the second one that's shown here called Eraser Dust. And if I select that, you can see how it changes the look of my button. Now, one thing to be aware of is that when you switch to a different set of theme fonts, those theme fonts are going to be used for other stuff too. Like in this case, the same font on my button is also being applied to my caption. It's going to also be used for um, text boxes, answer choices on quiz questions, things like that. So if you don't want to make that change for all of those items, another way to manage the font, if I just undo that change, is to select the button and up on the Home tab you can use any of the formatting options that you would normally use for a text box. Like you can change the font, um, the typeface, you can change the color, the size, you can modify some of the formatting. So those are some nice options too. You can also format your button itself, not just the text, but the way the button looks by coming up to the Format tab and using some of the options here. Like these are my fill colors. If I wanted to maybe change to this green glassy color, I could do that. I could also use a custom fill, change the border, the effects all sorts of options. I should also mention that these options are going to be different depending on the type of button you're using. So if you're using a checkbox or a radio button, you'll see different options here for the customization. OK, another cool thing is if you make some changes to your button and then you want other buttons to look just like this, you can right click and then choose Set as Default Button. And now if I insert another button in this course, even on a different slide, it's going to look the same way. So even the font, the color, all gets picked up from my default button choice. Now a push button also has some kind of unique options, and that is you can add an icon to your button. So like if I wanted to add a little symbol, I could come up to the Format tab and use this Button icon section and choose one of the symbols that are in the list here. You can also change the color of the symbol, like if I wanted to make it a different color or maybe change the way it's aligned, put it on the right side of my text. And of course, if I decide I don't want it on there after all, I can just click Remove Icon and it goes away. Um, I should also mention that if you do include an icon, the size of that icon is going to depend on the size of your button text. So I can increase that by coming up to the Home tab and using the Font Increase option. That's going to change the size of my text as well as the icon. So that's how to insert and customize buttons in your Articulate Storyline course.